Elka, what suggestions do you have for those of us in the uh, business of uh, communicating with the public uh, for doing a better job? Uh, I'm of the generation uh, uh, that helped to start that doom and gloom style of reporting, <laughs> I'm afraid. My book, uh, The Next 100 Years, uh, uh, ended with a comparison to the Manhattan Project. We were uh, uh, in the Manhattan Project, people debated, will setting off the first atomic bomb ignite the atmosphere and incinerate the planet? And they did a lot of calculations and they decided Probably not, let's go ahead. <laughs> and so I said, you know, uh, we're looking at a very risky proposition right now, and um, really in slow motion, it's on the same scale. Um, I thought, and many other uh, writers back then thought, that that should do it. Mm -hmm. Really, that should do it. And clearly, that didn't do it. So what, what do you say now? What, what should people be, how should people be framing this issue more effectively? So negative messaging works very well uh, because it gets people's attention when there is a simple solution to, to the risk. Mm. Yeah? Uh, and uh, uh, if there is no simple solution, as it's the case in, in climate change, you, know, you really have to get people's attention in a much more sustained fashion. And I think for that, we have to turn on the one hand to positive messaging. And there are many, many benefits, you know, benefits not just for future generations, but benefits to ourselves, to our, our planet, uh, to air quality, to public health, you know, that, that come with uh, moving from a carbon-based economy to a renewable energy economy. So I think we have to sort of uh, focus on, 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 on those benefits in a, in a positive way, creating new jobs, creating you know, a, a better future for ourselves. Uh, and uh, in the process of doing so, the other barrier we have to remove is the feeling that sort of there's not nothing that any single individual can do that's effective, you know, so the efficacy barrier. Uh, and you know, I oftentimes say, well, we have no silver bullets, but we do have silver buckshot. And if you multiply the, the many, many things that every single one of us can do in our area of uh, daily life, in our area of expertise, uh, to make, uh, to reduce our energy consumption or to increase in energy efficiency, those things multiply by seven billion. They multiply by the thousand times you do it in a, in a given year. And if you put all these wedges together, you know, the, the, the behavior change wedge uh, in its own right, but then also the behavior change that amplifies and multiplies the effectiveness of economic interventions, yeah, framing something as a gain as, a, as opposed to a loss, uh, different w ways of implementing a tax incentive, different ways of advertising a new technology, uh, and learning from our failures to do so successfully in the past. I think we can make tremendous progress, but positive messaging uh, and communicating the effectiveness of small interventions in different domains all around the world, all hands on deck, yeah, and, and, and we can actually solve this problem. Hmm. 